We're going to look at one of the ways to make aldehydes and ketones now. And this is a revision of something that we study at AS. So we've actually come across aldehydes and ketones before in the alcohols topic. So if you remember, aldehydes and ketones are produced from the oxidation of alcohols. Now I've got a video on this uh, where I actually do the oxidation reaction with the different apparatus. So if you need a recap on that then I would encourage you to watch that video as well. Just a reminder for you, the oxidizing agent is acidified potassium dichromate 6 and the formula of that is K2Cr2O7. The slash H plus is the acidified part. Why have I used an orange pen? Because it's an orange chemical. There must be a source of heat and if a reaction takes place there's a colour change so the orange acidified potassium dichromate 6 goes to green. So we'll take a look now at primary alcohols and what happens to them when we oxidise them. So we'll do distillation first. So I've quickly sketched very crudely the distillation apparatus. So inside this flask we've got our primary alcohol and the oxidising agent. So it's orange. We heat it up and the reaction takes place. This would start to go green because the reaction is happening. And we would produce an aldehyde. Now aldehydes are very volatile and they would evaporate. And because they can, they would travel up through the condenser and condense because of the cold water flowing around the outside here into the liquid. And so what do we get here? We get the aldehyde. So there's an example of an equation. We've got propanol oxidized under distillation. So we would make propanol and water. If we put the condenser into a vertical position now, we've got what's called reflux apparatus. And so the same thing, we've got our primary alcohol and oxidizing agent in the flask. We're going to heat it up and the reaction will take place. This will go green, but if you think about what's going to happen, the aldehyde that we've just seen will be produced first, that will vaporize, and it will start to travel up the condenser. But because the condenser is surrounded by a flow of cold water, the aldehyde will condense and drop back down as a liquid into the original flask where there's still some oxidizing agent and so the second oxidation can take place and so instead of producing the aldehyde we would ultimately produce the carboxylic acid and there's the chemical equation I've stuck with propanol so you can sort of make a comparison so propanol if you reflux this with the oxidizing agent of course you would have two oxidations taking place and so we need two moles of oxidizing agent we would make propanoic acid carboxylic acid corresponding to the alcohol and we'd make that we'd make one mole of water now that water is produced in the first oxidation reaction when the aldehyde is produced it is not produced in the second one if we look at secondary alcohols now you remember from AS, these can only be oxidized once, so it doesn't really matter whether you have reflux or distillation. I've chosen reflux just to make sure that the reaction happens to goes to completion. And so we would have our secondary alcohol in here with the oxidizing agent, and we would heat it up. The oxidation reaction would take place. This would go green, and the vapor. So we're going to get a ketone now, if it's a secondary alcohol, the ketone would evaporate, but it would condense inside this cold water jacket, fall back down, and but because it's a secondary alcohol, we've made a ketone, we can't oxidize that any further, and so we just get a ketone at the end of this process. And there's the equation, so I've chose propan 2 
just so it ties in nicely with the propane one all we use for the primary alcohol example. So propane two all with the oxidizing agent, only one oxidation possible, even with reflux. So we just need one mole of oxidizing agent. So we're going to make propanone and water. We're going to go into the reactions of carbonyls now. So I suppose it makes sense to just build on what we've just said there about the oxidation of alcohols. If you remember, primary alcohols can be oxidized twice, and that's because the first oxidation product, the aldehyde, can be oxidized. So there's a reaction of an aldehyde. They can be oxidized. So I've gone for ethanol this time, CH3CHO. Same oxidizing agent as before, the orange potassium dichromate acidified. Obviously we need to heat this up and we would get an oxidation taking place and we would make the corresponding carboxylic acid. So ethanol would make ethanoic acid and the colour changes obviously orange to green just like before. We're now going to look at the reduction of aldehydes and ketones. So we need to point out straight away what the reducing agent is. So the chemical formula for the reducing agent is NaBH4. Its name is sodium tetrahydroborate 3 NaBH4. Now in equations, just like we could use the O in square brackets for the oxidizing agent, we use H in square brackets to represent the reducing agent. So you can see the reducing agent contains this BH4 minus ion and that is a source of hydride ions, H minus ions. So if we just quickly draw up the dot and cross diagram for a hydride ion, you can see its role in the mechanism which we're going to come on to. So a hydrogen atom, obviously one electron in its outer shell. A hydride ion, well it has an extra electron so ions have to be in square brackets, remember. So there's the dot and cross diagram for the hydride ion. Now if you think about the carbonyl group, we've got the C double bond O here. There's a dipole on this bond. So we've got a slightly positive carbon and this lone pair of electrons on this hydride ion is obviously going to be attracted to that carbon. And so yeah, that will feature in the mechanism. Before we do the mechanism, we'll just look at some simple examples of this. So if we start with the aldehydes, so we're going to reduce an aldehyde. We're going to use the reducing agent, NaBH4, but we're going to use H in square brackets for our equation. Now that's in water. You'll see why when we do the mechanism and we're going to heat it. So there's the example I'm using for this. I'm going to reduce propanol. Remember that is this. And you can see from the equation, what is propanol reduced to? Well, it's reduced back to the primary alcohol. So you think about it the other way around, when you oxidize this, you make that. Reduction is the opposite of oxidation. And so if you reduce the aldehyde, hope I'm not confusing you here, you reduce the aldehyde you're going to make the corresponding primary alcohol. You can see in the equation there are two uh, moles of reducing agent and I've got a silly way of explaining to my students a way to remember it anyway and um, call it the oxygen sandwich and so you can see the two H's if you think of those as the bread we're going to put one H there and the other H there. So we end up with CHHOH, which is obviously CH2OH. So in the exam, you may well be faced with something awful looking like this. If you just apply my silly trick, then it obviously it makes it a lot easier. So if we reduce this, there's an aldehyde there, look, so that's going to be reduced. So if you just remember the simple rule, we need two H's in the square brackets, and we just make this oxygen sandwich so it becomes H2O8. There you go, how easy was that?
And similarly with ketones, we can reduce ketones by reducing them using NABH4 in water and heating it up. So you can see the example I'm using there is one, two, three, four, five. So it's pentan three on the carbonyl groups on carbon number three there, pentan three on. So let's just apply the oxygen sandwich rule. So we're going to put an H either side of the O. So we're going to get CH3, CH2, CH, OH, and then CH2, CH3. So pentan 3 on has become pentan 3 ol. We've obviously made a secondary alcohol by reducing a ketone. And remember when you oxidize a secondary alcohol, you make the ketone. And again, we'll just look at a more difficult example. So again, you'll see that in the exam. You may well think, oh, that doesn't look anything like anything in my notes. Just keep calm. Apply the little rule. H either side of the O. So we're going to put that H there. And that other H would obviously go there. So again, we've made a secondary alcohol. This OH is bonded to this carbon, which is directly bonded to that carbon and that one so it's a secondary alcohol